All right, one more good time. This time what I want to do is I want to look at uh, two springs in parallel. All right. So I want to do this because most of the stuff that I think is really worthwhile in this class as far as uh, springs are concerned. Um, I'll call that K1 up here, K2 down here, is how to figure out what the frequency is. What is the frequency of a system? All right, and in class, of course, I went over the very standard um, single, single spring, simple harmonic oscillator. The online videos you could look at the um, the approximation that gets you simple harmonic motion in the pendulum. That's also in the show, or that's also in not the show notes, the um, the class notes. So, I want here to do something that's a little bit different, more towards what I generally like to ask, which is to take some situation, in this case, I've got two springs in parallel, uh, and you should be right now working two springs in series, in groups. Um, and I want to take this situation and figure out what the frequency is going through the procedure that I've already shown you in class. So. That's the find there. The given is we have a box of mass M and two springs. So we have spring one with a stiffness of K1 and a spring two with a stiffness of K2. All right, so we've got all those things going for us. That should be sufficient for now. Um, now we want to go in and actually start analyzing the problem with our conceptually before we start our plan and after our plan we can do some of the math. So what kind of problem is this? Well, we've got forces from these springs that are going to pull and push this mass around. So this is going to be moving. So this has got to be a Newton's second law problem. Okay, so we've got Newton's second law there. And the equation for that is always the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now we just have to figure out, you know, what direction the acceleration is in and stuff like that. So we start off with this by drawing our free body diagram. We've got a Newton's second law problem. We need a free body diagram. Same thing with a Newton's first law problem. But um, basically anything with forces, a free body diagram is a safe bet for a representation that's going to help you. Um, obviously, occasionally the easier. Uh, in this case, the spring, it goes back and forth, so we want to make sure that our net force, which is going to be in that horizontal direction, is in the positive direction. That's just so that it'll be correct, it'll have the correct sign, uh, depending on what's happening with the spring forces down here, right? So I've got one spring force here, uh, S1, I better use whatever I used in the notes, F1 and one here, F2, all right? So we've got the spring forces pulling back and the acceleration going that way. Um, let's see, then we're going to have the weight here and the normal force here, okay? Um, and that's our free body diagram, that's utterly sufficient. Uh, there's nothing more. I, how can you have utterly sufficient? That makes absolutely no sense. Um, but that's all you really need to solve the problem. So, remember, now we need a plan. Plan, first thing we start with is finding an expression for that omega. All right, and so that's one to find omega. Uh, um, we need the standard form of the simple harmonic oscillator. Okay, and that standard form is x double dot, 
the second derivative with respect to x plus um, the square of the frequency times x is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what we want there. We want that omega. Uh, we don't know x and we don't know x double dot. We can find them through other means. Um, x double dot, we find x double dot with the definition of acceleration. So we just say a is equal to x double dot, right? So we're good with that. That's what we want. That's what we don't know. And we go on to three. We need to find something that has to do with x. Well, either one of these springs is okay, right? So find x with Hooke's Law. Okay, so if we find x with Hooke's Law, that means the um, magnitude of that force is equal to the spring constant times the distance. I've already accounted for the negative sign by putting it that direction. All right, so we wanted this guy. Um, this guy we know, we don't know F1. Okay, so, so far we've gotten rid of that guy and that guy. We don't need those question marks. Um, and we have the acceleration and the force going for us. Um, in this case, we just need to go ahead and say, okay, find the force. Find F1 with the free body diagram. Um, and so for that free body diagram, we have minus the force in that direction, minus the force for 2 um, equals MA. Okay, so that's what we've got. Um, force 1, we need to figure out what force 2 is. M is there, and I'm guessing that we're going to have to just hope that A drops out. 5. What's left? F2 is left, so we'll find F2 with Hooke's Law. F2, I promised you that I'd get this done tonight, so I'm not going to redo this because of the little tiny error. I'm sorry. All right, so there's F2. Don't already have that, already have that. That's a check mark because we found it somewhere else. And that means we're done. That means we're done. And next, all we need to do is to figure out how to make all this work. Um, the first thing I would do here, so A, is I'd substitute, uh, what should I substitute in there? I should substitute into 4, um, 3, 5, and 2. So 2, 3, and 5 into... Four. Okay, so then minus F1 becomes minus K1X. Uh, minus F2 becomes minus K2X. Um, remember, this is F2 and this is F1. Uh, and the A becomes an X double dot. Okay. Um, so we can put that into standard form. B is put into standard form. And the standard form would have us put just x dot, right? We want to put it like this, x dot um, plus k1 plus k2. divided by m to get it away from that x, x double dot, from that acceleration. And all this is, this x1, the k1 and k2 are multiplied by x, 
So we have an x there, and that's all equal to zero. Okay, so now this thing looks like that thing, and this part here has to be the square of the frequency. So uh, we'll do an analogy. So this thing has to be omega squared, so omega squared is equal to k1 plus k2 over m. So basically, in this case, we get an effective spring constant of the sum of the two springs on this side, uh, which is something you should know. Okay, so there's our answer, and we're happy, happy people. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to sort of analyze the answer to see if the answer is okay. Uh, let's see. First thing is we want to look at the symbols. We've got a K1 and a K2. There's a K1, there's a K2, which means those are given. So those are viable symbols. And then we have an M down here that's also given, so that's also a viable symbol. And we have nothing else, so we'll leave the universals blank. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Next, we have to analyze the dimensions of this answer. So we want t to the minus 1, right? Omega is t to the minus 1. Now we're going to take the square root of this thing, which is the square root of k1 plus k2 over m. Uh, that's just equal to the square root the square root of one of those, like k1 to the one-half, divided by m to the one-half. Okay, and what were the dimensions of the spring constant? It's newtons over meters. Um, that's mlt to the minus 2 divided by l, so that's mt to the minus 2. mt to the minus 2 to the one-half times m to the minus one-half, so these two guys cancel. Minus one-half and one-half is minus one, so that's good. We did good. So we have what seems to be the correct answer. And like I said, this gives us the standard um, effective spring constant for two springs in parallel, which is just the sum of the two spring constants. Uh, you have two exercises in your, you know, two exercises where you have to basically find the same result for the um, two springs in series. They're, they're very um, famous results. Uh, one of those is the group work that is basically doing the same thing that I just did here, but for the two springs in series, and the other one is a uh, mass spring system how far does something how far do things extend when you put force on them and that's in your web assigned homework so hopefully you find this is a useful pattern for you like i said we'll do this a few more times we'll have the physical pendulum for example later on and we'll have lots and lots of different things you can do playing with that um so it's just a good idea to get into this habit. So you'll have at least one sort of class where you'll have to learn how to do this for each thing. Um, but I much prefer that you understand how to do this from first principles rather than looking things up in a book because it doesn't always work, right? Looking at things up in the book. Okay, well, thank you very much, and I will see you in class.